how you know how can I be this person and and create this this you know illusion and um, you know I'm really honest with myself when in maybe too much so and I said I I think you got the wrong guy and <laughs> and um, Rob said you know what just because you answered it that way we think you're the right guy. And because he goes, because anybody who's an Asian American or any Asian whatsoever would jump at this chance and would lie through their teeth about every aspect of their background and their history as a martial artist in order to get the role. And I said, oh, well, I said, and he said, um, listen, you, you know, take the script home, read it. Uh, give me a call when you've read it, when, you, when you've read it. And, um, you know, Bonnie Timmerman speaks highly of you. You, you did a wonderful audition for, for that film. And uh, she said, you, you you look great. You get, you know, physically, you have a good body for it. I said, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you know, this all show no go. It's like, <laughs> it ain't Bruce Lee, you know. Um, and uh, so I went home. I went home. I, I, I looked at the cover. I kept looking at the cover thinking like, oh, my God. I said, I think I got in, in over my head here. And um, so a week goes by. At the end of the week, Rob Cohen calls me. He says, have you read it? What do you think? I said, you know, Rob, I haven't, I'm sorry. I haven't, you know, it's like, I, I'm still contemplating whether this is a good idea. He goes, well, what are you afraid of? Hmm. I said, what am I afraid of? I said, I'm afraid of making the biggest ass of myself before my career even started. I said, I said, you know, I've seen those chop socky movies with, you know, everybody hmm. plays Bruce Lai or Bruce this or Bruce that lay. And, yep. and I said, it looks awful. And um, he says, well, I promise you, you know, just read the script that, you know, if this all goes, you know, and gets a green light, he goes, I'll give you all the support. You know, you got me, you know, we'll, we'll pull out the stops. We'll give you time to prepare everything. And I said, okay. I said, and then I kind of went another week and, it, and like maybe like four days and he called again. He goes, you read it, right? I said, no, but you know what, Rob? I said, it's a good thing you called me because it's, it's motivating me. I'm going to read it i'm gonna read it and i did i said it's wonderful i said and and, and linda lee uh, bruce's widow is behind it mm -hmm. she's spot supporting it i said that's that's all i need to know i said okay i said let, let, let's talk, talk and let's get on the road with this you know it's like let, let's see what we have to do and then the studios came back and they said we well, need him to do a screen test mm -hmm. and they said okay and uh i prepared like a couple of months for that to get you know in, in somewhat looking bruce looking kind of image um and we did it and we had it was a whole a whole day and it was like really professional really well done you know the, they pulled out the stops and we got a, a sound stage and we we did it and um they sent it to the the higher ups you know all the suits in in the university said go for it and mm -hmm. uh then that the ball started rolling right and uh one of the one of the stuntmen that was um a martial artist he was training me in the early part mm -hmm. uh for the um for the screen test and then he said linda lee called me and called rob and and said Who, who's training jason and a lot of bruce's students or his former his former students wanted to know and there was a handful of guys that were kind of considered the old timers that studied with him and um this trainer um uh, stunt guy um took me around to meet all these uh, guys um some i i kind of heard of and i knew through uh, stop you know uh, i i hadn't heard of and um and i settled on uh one of the students named jerry poti who mm -hmm. kind of gave me an exchange empty hand exchange um uh exhibition that kind of shocked me it, it, and, and I said, wow. And he did this move on me and he pulled me involuntarily and, and, and like shocked my whole system because of the explosiveness and he, and didn't do me any harm. Just like showed me this, like, and I went, what the hell is that? <laughs> and I said, and he goes, that's Bruce Lee. I said, I believe that. I believe that that what I, that what I felt was exactly what I grew up watching as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, that is, and then, and then, he, then 
as I started training with, with this Sifu, um, mm -hmm. a student of Bruce, he started passing on all these little um, pearls of wisdom mm -hmm. that Bruce used to tell him. And he says, uh, to see is to be deceived, to hear is to be lied to, but to feel is to believe. Mm -hmm. And I went, I sure felt that. And I believe that, that, that you are the person to take me to that place where I can perform this and honestly feel like I'm doing the man justice. Mm -hmm. And um, that, 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 was the, that was the calling card. And uh, we kind of set off on that foot. Yeah, watching the movie again, what I'm really impressed by is, is just your physicality in that role. You you do such a great job when you're striking poses and you're doing that vibration that Bruce Lee would do, and you have the voice going. You 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 can tell. You know, it, it's not just an imitation. It feels very real. It feels like you really are channeling him in that moment in, in the way you're describing that way. Yeah, and then that, that was the thing. It was the feeling, you know, you want to grab this, you know, maybe I may not look identical to him. I may not have the, the smaller, tighter structure as he did, you know, physically, but it was the spirit of the guy, you know, it's like that, that indomitable spirit, you know, that he had that, you know, he was going to get up, you know, every time he, he went down and, and my, my teacher, Jerry used to say, you know, he goes, you know, a lot of what people don't know, most of the time, a lot of the time, Bruce was in the bed mm -hmm. because he injured himself. He pushed him so, himself so hard that he'd injured himself. Mm -hmm. And he's constantly, you know, uh, laid up. And I, and I said that that's, you know, that, that's what you want to get across. Yeah. You want to get across that, that, you know, die, die, he's not going to give up. You know, that kind of like, you know, that, that just tenacity. And, um, and to carry that, you know, was like, Oh, as we started training, it was like, like, this is how he got to where he, where he was. Right. Um, and it, it was in the training that I felt like, wow, this is like that, that whole lightness of being mm -hmm. that he was going for. Like Bruce wasn't just a martial artist. He was in that metaphysical trip. You know, that he wanted to go where his mind went. And he wanted to take his body where his mind went. And he goes, where where can the mind go? Your mind can move in a speed of light. He goes, that's where I want to go. And so you had this whole thing that his whole efforts, you know, we may see it as like, you know, just um, oh, martial art, badass martial artist, you know, exceptional skill level and all these things. But there was a, there was a definite like, you know, transformation i think with him that um you don't see it but you feel it there is something about his aura that he was you know par excellence of of what he was trying to go for you know yeah he's fast yeah he's this yeah but you know there's there's something in the chinese um culture that i think that's what he was trying to express is the chi you know that that chi that you manifest and you can build on that chi and 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 you can you can emanate that chi. And you know, a lot of like um old time the Chinese healers and and Taoist priests and people who have and Shaolin, you know, people have worked for generations on really just that, that that ability um to manifest that that chi and be able to share that chi. And um one thing Bruce had going for him, he was in the media. And he was an actor and he was going to transmit that chi onto the screen and you are not going to be able to take your eyes off of it. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that was like what I was trying to go for. I was trying to achieve that lightness of being, that, that effervescence, you know, that, that he, that I believed and I, what I saw, I believe on screen when, when I saw him and just even his still moments, like you're saying, you know, and Enter the Dragon, there's those still moments when he's in the film room yeah. and it's like, you see that going on. It's like, hey, yeah, yeah, you know, and that, 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 you know, act as an actor. Who wouldn't want to achieve that? That, that simpleness, that, that simplicity, that, that was the hardest thing that my teacher would say to me in Bruce's words. He said, Bruce used to always say simplicity is the hardest thing to convey. 
And he, he was so right. You try to like, you know, develop that that aura, um, but you have to, the whole trick is to let things go and let that, you know, let, let go of this. Like they would always used to say, um, don't think too much. Mm. Like, you know, let go of what you think you know. And I was like, holy cow let go of what i think i know you know and it's like and, and those were the magic words that was like the philosophy behind you know all of that so that you know as you know now we're getting to the point that we're 30 years on right and that experience has, has changed my life i i can still you know recall and i'm not training necessarily but i still recall all of those things hmm. I still recall all of those things like it was yesterday. Right. And that, you know, to me was like, wow, that, you know, it, it, I pass on to my children now, you know, all this, this, this essence of what um, I, I learned and what, you know, the training gave me and everything. So, um, and I, I always love sharing it, you know, that it's, it's one of the things, it's like a culture, right? It's like culture is not secret, but it's sacred. You know, and then and, and that's the thing, you know, Bruce was willing to share it and um, and he knew, yeah, it's a sacred, it's very sacred, but let's not be so secretive about it. You can share it and, you know, but share it with the right attitude. And yeah. and, and so that that was, you know, it was like, just blew my mind for, for so many years. And, and I stayed on the path of training for, for gosh, after the film, um, must be like 15 years or something or over that, that, that I, you know, I really, it really changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it really, you, you still carry it with you. It still feels a part of you in, the, in, in that way. That's really wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then like, you know, and it's funny because, uh, you know, every so-called martial artist who has <laughs> been affected by Bruce or, or um, anything, you know, will always go and, and uh, attempt to do their own thing. Right. And become in become you know uh, the individual and and um, you know try to find try to find their their distinction in some fashion, and it's weird because like my fascination with Jeet Kune Do and the Taoist arts led me into gardening and farming. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And you know that's what I what I did for what I've been doing for over twenty plus years now. You know it's like. Amazing. And it, 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 it's that it's that thing where, once again, it was always that Bruce thing in the back of my mind, which was you know communicated to me through through Jerry, who would also say they always say, uh, the thing you want to grow into, the maturity that you want to achieve, has to do with sensitivity and awareness. Mm -hmm. With those two things, you will become a martial artist of your own distinction and it's for you to determine where you grasp the, the inf that, that information and th that wisdom and it's like i to me it was like the taoist thing was always to go back to nature was nature was the greatest teacher and even my teacher said that and so you know i was like okay well there's there's a learning curve here there there needs to be some deeper observation and a deeper uh uh you know, perspective on, on it. And I was like, when I started gardening the first five years, I started noticing those things, mm. you know, even, even like, like the movement, like I was using all hand tools and just the movement of squatting and, 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 you know, and, and duck walking and, and, you know, using the pick and shovel and, and the posture you needed to strengthen that, that, you know, making contact with something, you know, you always like, Oh, the, the first thing was always make contact with something. You know, that was Bruce's thing. When you train, make contact. And I was like, you know, hitting the dirt and he, with these tools and, and cutting motions and everything was like all this martial arts stuff was like, keep your elbows in, keep your, you know, keep your structure tight, you know, economy of motion and breathing and stuff. And it was like, I could go for many hours, you know, as a gardener, you know, in, 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 in that fashion. And, and it made me strong. It made me strong in body. And, and I believe it made me strong in spirit. 
Um, and it was this sense of like, it was the opposite of just taking, you know, it was like giving back. Yeah. And so the whole philosophy um, was giving back instead of, and, and it balanced the martial arts attitude in a, com the martial arts combative attitude of, of, taking someone out, taking a life or, or, or defending your family in, in a fashion so vicious and so ferocious, you know, that, 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 that was the animal that you contain. Um, and so this was the perfect balance. It was like, you know, instead of working so hard and, you know, building, you know, a, a weapon and that can destroy, you're also building the weapon that can give life and give back. So that was, to me, was the essence of like so many of, you know, the the teachings. And every once in a while, I'd run into Linda Lee, you know, at, at these different events with, you know, for Bruce. And I just loved that lady. I mean, she's just, you know, she's always like, I'm always telling her, oh, thank you so much. You know, you, you, the, you know that opportunity gave me my life, really. I mean, gave me such an incredible life of creating a vision, you know, for myself and creating, you know, a vision, a, a tapestry of what I wanted my life to be and, and, and how that has evolved. Um, so, you know, it's like, it's just pearls of wisdom. You know, it was just that, it was that I walked into something that was just, you know, with giant obstacles and, 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 and tremendous fear and, um, you know, I even had like an emotional breakdown while I was training for, you know, for the um, for the role. And I something I just thought uh, everything was too heavy. You know, it was like so much pressure. It was like I just fell apart. I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't really do anything for like a week. I was just like flattened. <laughs> I look back on it now. It's like, you know, you can laugh about it. But, you know, when you're in the middle of it, it's like your whole world is collapsing. It's like, you know, I'm. I'm going to be the, 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 you know, the one that everyone mocks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. The next Bruce Lai, the next Bruce Lee with an L I right. You right, know, that was right. your mind. You yeah. don't want to be that. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, I'm like, you know, like, I think as an actor, it's like, you want to diversify. You want to yeah. be able to play different roles and play different roles convincingly. So mm -hmm. this was either going to be a, a golden opportunity or it was going to be like a, you know, a tarnished uh, effort. <laughs> well, it's so interesting too, when I think about it, I mean, when, when Bruce Lee died in 1973, there was a 30 year gap before Dragon came along. And in that gap, there was really no, in the West anyway, Asian action hero. You didn't see that. It got, uh, the Asians were mainly represented in, in sort of comedies like uh, uh, the John Hughes movies and things like that in sort of negative ways. So you got to bring back the original Asian action hero in that way and and be your be an action hero yourself in the same way i, I think that's really true because jet lee came later in in the west jackie chan got big later in the west did were you aware of that knowing that you were sort of bringing back the asian action hero to western audiences in that way that they hadn't seen since bruce lee well i i, I had i did experience um a bit of um uh you know people kind of leaning on me mm. to be that 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 figure right. and um and I, and it might have been great, but there was there was so many um I, how do I put it? I learned so much from that experience that I wanted to excel on that or or mm. or, or, or capitalize on that. Right. And every time I tried to talk about it to studios and and you know the the executives, it was it was I had the hardest time conveying what actually I wanted to see out of myself and do for the film. Um, because at the time, the action heroes were not that complex, I should say. You know, they they, they were kind of like grab a machine gun or a shotgun and then, you know, beat them up, shoot them up. I'm big, bad, and, 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 and you know, um, I mean. Um, so it was, it was, it was really tricky trying to communicate that, that finesse. Right. And um, I, I, I tried on a couple of occasions and then I think I got um, disenchanted with, with, with trying to make that effort. Um, and um, that's kind of like, 
you know, like the the action stuff was more based around um, circumstantial events rather than an individual performance. Right. You know, um, uh, so so a lot of times, you know, it was always like, okay, why don't we do this action movie? And I and I, I didn't quite get it because I was mm-hmm. looking for that Bruce vehicle. You know, I was looking for that 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 thing that would show your skill set and um and this newfound skill set that i had you know uh, worked so hard to to develop um and a lot of it was like oh well it's a big picture but they need good actors to ground Mm. to ground it but i said oh i'm not sure that's really what i'm looking for um and there was opportunities that i passed on that maybe i shouldn't have you know that were maybe great opportunities but I don't know. I, I, you know, I was just looking at it from a different perspective. I, I should ask, was Mortal Kombat one of those opportunities you're referring to? That's sort of famous. Like you were offered the role in that and then decided not to do it. Is that is that right? Yeah. And then I think Robin Shu took over. Um, and there, there was other ones that were not martial arts based. Um, mm-hmm. There was, I think, uh, I remember having the script speed on oh. my on my desk. You know, and then Keanu Reeves ended up doing it. And then there was Independence Day, which uh, Will Smith ended up doing. Wow. Um, so there was a lot of like these big, you know, kind of blockbuster type of films that uh, in my own little like weird, quirky way were just maybe were just that. It wasn't, um, you know, um, maybe like emotionally driven mm-hmm. kind of pictures. Yeah. Right. So, I mean... Uh, you know, it's all it, whatever it is, what it is, but yeah. um, it's uh, <laughs> but you can kind of see where I was like, I, I, I really uh, and and it's something sometimes these big pictures can nail the humanity of it all, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I think I think I wanted to strip away a lot of that and and just really, you know, rely on the the essence of that the individual, you know, and and not so much the technology. The other great thing about Dragon Watch again is how much of a romance it is with you and Lauren Holly. Like you really, they really lean into that. There's, it's, it's, it's a sexy movie at times. You have these really like these charged sex scenes. And, and again, we weren't seeing Asian actors in that uh, kind of way at that time in the nineties. I wonder again, if that felt unique for you, knowing you were capturing that aspect as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know, I, I did recognize what it was and I, I, as far as the film was uh, being a love story, between a, a, a Caucasian woman and an Asian man. And I was like, wow, this is kind of special. This is not being, you know, like, uh, this is the kind of before it's time. Mm-hmm. And I think Bruce was that, he was before his time. And, um, you know, also like I did, um, I did a film before that called Map of the Human Heart, which kind of put me in that roman- romantic lead uh, kind of um, arena. And um, at that time playing opposite uh, Anne Pario, the, the French mm-hmm. actress. And um, that was, uh, you know, kind of maybe a, a preset for what um, Dragon, you know, was. And, and it was definitely um, something that I, you know, I really enjoyed being a part of that, you know, perpetuating that, that drink mm-hmm. and that, that, that sexuality of an Asian man, which is often, was oftentimes at the time, oftentimes like kind of put down or, or put into a comedic, you know, um, symbol i guess uh and um yeah absolutely and that was one of the things that uh i think with um even a lot of asian actors who came to me years after the film was out they said you know i i i I gotta hand it to you 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 gave me the courage to become an actor Mm. as an asian man asian american become an actor in in the you know in the field of hollywood and I was like, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, you know, we had, we never saw um, a romantic leading, a man, romantic leading man of Asian ancestry, and 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 you were like the one that kind of did it exceptionally well. And I was really proud of that. I was really proud that these young actors, you know, were maybe even just one generation below me. It was just like, I was just so. Um, felt really good it felt really good that i was able to inspire you know uh, other people with, with with that performance because i knew like man i i i 
it's one of those things when you put everything, you just drop everything and you commit to it and you just hope that, you know, you come out smelling roses. And um, that was, that was a nice um, tip of the hat for, for a lot of people for, you know, offering to me. Absolutely. The, the scene I always remember, and, and it's a great scene watching again too, is the scene where you and, and Linda, are, are, and Lauren Holly are, are in the movie theater watching Breakfast, Breakfast at Tiffany's and uh, Bruce comes face to face with with that orient, orientalism that defined Hollywood in the 60s. It, it's such a, what and watching that in Hong Kong the way I did, it was a major moment there too, because we were watching history in, in that way and the audiences seeing how they were depicted in other movies. It, it's, it's a really striking moment and still really works, I think, showing prejudice so vividly that way yeah and then and, and that was uh, even a lot of the preparation for mm -hmm. uh you know the film was was looking at the obstacles that that bruce faced right. and and you know taking into account those things that you know um pushed kind of the asian man aside you know for other opportunities and uh and i also experienced some of that you know in my early years living in orange county sure. uh, because it, it was a very kind of homogenized society at the time down there and um it wasn't as mixed and um i you know i felt you know kind of like minority and, and, and marginalized in in many ways um and you know also you know there was there was um not that many people who uh knew about asian cultures and i think right about that time it was just when sushi was just trying to make its you know break into california <laughs> and uh you know that was like the only thing that was like to me i looked around you know they were, not like now you have thai vietnamese you know all, all these like other colors um so at the time it was it was pretty minimal um and um and you know oftentimes you know uh, meekness was 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 taken for for weakness <laughs> and uh you know it was something that uh a lot of oriental or asian cultures carry they carry this kind of a meek you know, kind of uh, demeanor, uh, and and you know, it, you know, watching. So I really utilize a lot of that that um, sort of research and and also my own experiences in that scene. The movie does take certain liberties with with history. It's as as we said, it's it's both a Bruce Lee movie and a biopic. Some of the some of the things, for example, how he hurts his back is different than sort of how it happened in, in real life. When when you would take those liberties, were you at all concerned that people would get uh, people who knew Bruce would be upset about that, or were, were, were did you understand? Did they understand what you were making and, and how Dragon was different than a biopic? Well, you know, people have to understand that making a film is a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I talk, talk with Rob Cohen about this, and, you know, he, he was kind of taking his his cue from uh, other filmmakers um, and other, um, you know, legendary filmmakers and say, you know, you, you take you take the good things, you take the most interesting things from a person's life. And sometimes you have to elaborate on certain issues about it. Um, and it is, it's not a, a straightforward um, documentary. Mm -hmm. This is not a documentary. This this is a, a biography picture, and a moving picture, and um, so they took a lot of creative license with with some things and kind of shaped it around you know the story and and how to weave it you know so that there's there's it's fluid and 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 there's emotional um, uh, fluidity and connection, and I think that um, that those were the things I understood I, mm -hmm. I completely understood and 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 knowing uh, Bruce's student. Uh, Jerry Poutine and hearing stories, real, you know, truthful stories about all that. I knew exactly how he 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 did it did in his back. And, you know, you can even see it. You know, I I, I had a um a friend who was a ballet uh um professional. And when we watched uh Enter the Dragon, she, she said he has a he has a back injury. Hmm. And she could tell that just from his posture about how he, in, in, in when he's with Sammo Hong in that, in that Shaolin temple ring, you know? And then I was like, really, you can tell that. Was, yeah, it's just the way he, he carries his, 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 his back. And he's kind of like that, almost like a protective device. So then there was all those things and, and um, you know, little things like you, you, a lot of people who, who, who know Bruce's story and you know, would, would pick at it, but I wasn't really bothered by that. Um, you know, I, I felt once again that, you know, if you go and, and, and you, you give that inspiration of, of, of the man who was like wanted to fly, you know, and, and, and achieve a great deal in his lifetime in a short, short amount of time, 
um, and left us too early. Um, I think that there is that feeling. There, there is that we. I think I believe we communicated the essence of that. Absolutely. I, I definitely do want to touch on Brandon Lee because the way his his tragedy sort of coincided with the film was really sad at the time, and everyone knew it. You, you had met him before making the movie. Uh, supposedly, he had been offered the chance to play his father, and, and sort of said, "No, I don't want to do that." Tell me about uh, his, his involvement and, and and your relationship with him uh, while while making the movie uh, before his death. Yeah, um, I got the call and that uh, Brandon wanted to meet me. And I think at this point in time, he had already passed um, mm -hmm. on, on the project. Um, and um, so I said, okay, great. And then uh, we ended up meeting in Beverly Hills at Mr. Chow's for dinner. And uh, he pulled up in his uh, fancy sports car, um, that, that NSX, I think is a, as Acura's. And it was really, I was like, wow, it's like, wow, this is like, guy's got a nice car. And uh, we went in, and he was and he was very gregarious and very lively, and very energetic, and 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 he it was great. And and he actually did, I can't recall which monologue it was, but he did a monologue at the dinner table. I mean, a full blown performance. Wow! Because he just he, that's how excited you know he was about like being an actor, and he just he just loved the idea. And I was just like, wow! I just I just sat back like my mouth open like wow <laughs> he's just <laughs> and there were a lot of people you know around like you know in the other tables and they were just like whoa and we were just like yeah after it was finished <laughs> um so you know that was you know worth so much because um to get his blessings on that you know it's like it, it was a really big thing and um and 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 i think you know he probably talked with his mom and uh and i had i had a number of occasions to you know sit down with with linda and stuff and as as we were in pre-production for it so uh, hopefully his mom gave me a good uh recommendation <laughs> and he was cool with it you know there was never any uh anything terse there was never anything you know like he he, he you know advice oh he did give me advice what was the advice he gave me he said he says, uh, just be true to yourself, mm. you know? And I went like, cool, cool. It's like, he's, he goes, don't, don't try to be my, my dad. <laughs> just be, be true to yourself, be yourself. Right. It's like, cool. Okay. You got it, man. Yeah. Yeah. A lovely man. I mean, just, just a tragedy, you know, it's like, right. I think he would, he'd probably be, you know, guaranteed be an A-lister, you know, uh, you know, with, with, with the action stuff and he was very very skilled physically and talented so right so yeah when you'd heard he died did, did that because in the movie we have the whole scene with the demon and and bruce tells the demon to get away from his son w was that all added later was that sort of an acknowledgement of his passing how, how did that or was that separate was that not was that not influenced by that that was, that was part of that was part of the script Okay. like before he passed away you know and then it was like it was not like an homage in any way but it was like a weird like synchronicity or a weird like you know kind of like um premonition i guess i don't know what you call it but um uh yeah it, that was kind of like ooh, kind of eerie but you know and then you know and as the information filtered in about his accident and how it all went down, you know, then, you know, it started becoming clearer that, Hey, wait a minute, there's, there was some real, like, you know, um, misguided adventures on, on that, the Crow project. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it kind of made it less haunting in that sense, you know, less like, okay, there's something, you know, in the cosmos going on here. When the film came out, do you feel it was properly supported by the studio? Did you feel, because you, you you mentioned earlier, you, you sometimes would go in with meetings. They didn't always understand where you were coming from. Did you feel they got the movie? Did they understand what they had and why it was special? I I think, it, it, you know, certain scenes made it very exciting. And I, and I think it moved along at a good clip. And I think the, um, the relationship felt, you know, bonded. It felt it felt alive um and um i think 
the efforts that that you know was were portrayed to be Bruce's was um was relatable um for a lot of um Asian Americans and and for a lot of immigrants mm-hmm. who, who came over um and I, and, and it was a huge uh, African American audience even in you know at that when it came out and and I would walk into like bars and things and just these these brothers would just come up to me and just like be lit <laughs> they loved it you know it was like you know it's plus i guess it showed that that bruce's early students were you know were african-american guys and they just let you know um that was the kind of uh, guy that he was you know um and uh yeah and i i think i think the studios got it um whether you could like ride on that or create like you know you know how nowadays it's like any good idea gets rehashed you know um, I, I'm not sure, you know, he, maybe you can create a, a character similar to a Bruce, kind of a ninja-esque type of individual, you know, with, 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 which has, um, I don't almost a James Bond, Bondian kind of, um, you know, effect uh, with an Asian lead. I don't know. You know, it's like, it, it, I think it's been done in, in more of a B-movie level, but, I, you know, maybe... You know, maybe now's the time. I don't know. I I, I thought that it would be done already, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's slow to uh, maybe slow to take on. Slow to catch up. I mean, Shang Chi is probably, <laughs> probably uh, Shang Chi is probably the closest to to a, a studio lead uh, right. uh, Asian American or whatever. Which is crazy to think, yeah, exactly. But that, yeah, no, it is, because you had Jackie Chan making American movies for a little while. But in terms of starting new stars, it is it is rare. You you didn't see it. you, you have, it was a lot of uh, Hong Kong and and China and, and China actors who came over here and found some success. But yeah. they haven't done yeah. the homegrown thing, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, yeah. I know you had Chow Yun Fat, you know, coming over in the early days, and they wanted to pigeonhole the Asian actor into a particular role, like you know, just just so that they they knew what they were getting. Right. They didn't want to take any risks, and they knew what they were getting. They knew what a Jackie Chan was. They knew what a, a Jet Li could offer, mm-hmm. um, and um, you know that 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 was the the quota. Um, but like I I, I was kind of I'm kind of like the dark horse. You're not you don't quite know what you what you're gonna get out of me. Mm-hmm. And I think that that was kind of like a, a too much of a gamble. I actually, I should ask. I mean, Lilo and Stitch—they're remaking it live action. Are we going to see you in it? Do you think? Uh, is there? Is yeah, there a part of you? Do you hope to be in it? Yeah, absolutely. I got a little cameo in it. You know, nothing big, but just just <laughs> a taste to uh, this is drop my face in there. <laughs> and I know, um, and I know Tia Carrera. She's she's in it as well. She has a, probably a bigger role. Than me, but um, yeah, we're yeah, we're all just happy, you know, to like you know be a be a part of that franchise and and kind of be a, a connecting device in a way to, to to the new generation. I should ask too, I'm curious, having played Bruce Lee, when you saw, I'm not sure if you saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the Quentin Tarantino movie, but that depiction of Bruce got some controversy from, and especially from Bruce's family. How did you feel about that? Did you have any feeling about how Quentin depicted him in that movie? Yeah, it was a bit of a bummer in a way because, you know, it's, it's like he... Bruce's attitude was not like that, you know, mm-hmm. from all the people that I know and was never like, you know, you know, and, and when you, it's, it's like, you know, knowing someone's character and, and, and then portraying and you know it and you, but you just, in order to um, enhance the, the conflict within your play or within your, you know, movie, you, you create him to be something other than that's kind of like it was hard to take mm-hmm. and 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 you know bless his soul the 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 actor that played him um you know he did a great job but he was following orders you know he just kind of you know following what the director wanted um yeah i know and i know shannon lee was not very happy and, and a lot of other people were not very happy and, and i think they're justified to say so i think that, that you know you can take artistic license but you know you got to know that, that that there's this family still alive that, that you know that knew him and um and if you're going to take that you're going to if you're going to do that i think you should get approval you know before you do it you're going to change that that much just just be have respect that's all 
to your point, Rob did it the right way. He approached the family first and, you know, made sure they were okay with what he was going to do with Bruce Lee's story exactly. and got their approval. So, right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Everything was run through Linda and, and Lynn. I remember the first day I showed up at the studio, like I was looking around, I was calling, like, I didn't know where to go. There's all these different offices and rooms. And I walk in, there's this blonde lady, like hunched over some boxes. And I said, oh, hello. And I look, and she goes, oh, I said, I'm looking for um, Rob Cohen. And he, she goes, oh, you're Jason, right? And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, oh, I'm Linda. I'm like, oh, oh my God. That's like, <laughs> you know, at that time, I hadn't done any research, like what she looked like or anything like that. And then it kind of shocked me is like, here we are standing in this quiet room with boxes of Bruce's things all around this room in cardboard boxes. And we're alone. And I'm like, Holy cow. It's like, that was like scary, right? It was like, oh, geez. And then she says, oh, um, let me take you over there. And she was like, so nice. And they're like, you know, and she goes, I'm just going through all of his old things in case, you know, they want to um, make a costume or, or make costuming wants to duplicate some of his old things. And I said, oh, okay. I said, wow. I said, this all his clothes? He goes, yeah, we, we kind of kept a lot of it. And I was like, Oh, it was so neat. Yeah. <laughs> did you take yeah. it? Did, did, did you no, it? no, no. I was like, okay. no, I was like, I was too like, you know, awestruck, like, wow. It's like, you know, as as we stay I say in Hawaii, um, we say mana, you know, certain things have mana, they have energy, yeah. And I think all this stuff had had that vibe, like you're like, wow, like I got maybe kind of like how people think of Elvis's stuff, you know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> Right. That is to just leave it there. Let, let the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> world. <laughs> it's like a samurai sword, right? It's like you don't know where that samurai sword's been. It's like that thing's <laughs> vibing, you know? It's like I don't know how old that samurai sword is, but how many heads it chopped off. But you know, that thing's got uh, a vibe, you know. So just to be safe, don't just don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh man well i've kept you for so long but thank you so much for talking with me this has been really really great it was really nice to connect with you over this and again it's uh i i think you did the man proud and and it's and it's still a, a movie that really holds up today so congrats on it and congrats oh, on man thank you so much yeah <laughs> you take care brother all right take care